All right, guys, I actually have a vlog coming up for you that um, shows our trip to Yellowstone. And then when we went to the Grand Teton, it has taken me a while to get it up. But you know, when you get back from <laughs> visiting somewhere else, it takes some time to kind of settle back down into your normal routine. So that's why it took me so long to get this video up. But I did want to show you some stuff before the footage of the different pictures of the hikes and the different things we saw at Yellowstone and Grand Tetons um, starts to play. So in a lot of those shops, you'll see a lot of the wooden um, souvenirs. And this is one of the ones that I wanted. You'll see wolves, bison, um, what else? I saw a lot of different bears, but I thought this one was reasonably priced for the size. You can see it's bigger than my head. And then some, you'll find some stores that have like the jewelry, sterling silver with 925 stamped on it. I don't know if you can see that really well. And then the other things that I use a lot that I wanted to see and get was like these uh, water bottles. This is from Hydro Flask and it has Yellowstone Park on it as well as this one that has the Grand Tetons. I like them because you have to exclusively be there to get those. And I also got this one from Yellowstone. And if we can get this video to jump to 10,000 views, then I will send, I'll do a random drawing and send you guys one of these. This is a Yeti, uh, 36 ounce I believe. And it has the Yellowstone National Park on it. And this is one of the cheaper versions. Um, because it's not like a Yeti or a Hydro Flask, but it is the Liberty, which I heard has a good uh, warranty. They'll replace it if anything happens to it. But of course, none of these you'd want to put in a dishwasher because it might ruin the engraving or like for this one, the picture. But you see the bison there in front of a picture of Old Faithful and Little Prairie Lands. I do like that bison in the back. Then the other thing that I liked when I went to the parks was I like this shirt right here. Got this one at Yellowstone. It is a, let's see if I can straighten it out, a map of Yellowstone Park, which I thought was pretty unique. And I also got this one because it's a unique color. It's not a brown, it's like a plum. And I was able to see Old Faithful erupt twice, so I wanted to put that in there. So what my recommendations will be when you see this footage is, yes, please go see all of the pictures that, you know, we took, like the Grand Prismatic. There's a lot of those things that I recommend. But if you only have a couple of days to visit those areas like Yellowstone, and Grand Tetons, I would definitely recommend my biggest regret, which was spend more time at the Grand Tetons, uh, most importantly, Jenny Lake. It does cost more to stay inside of a park. For example, the areas inside of Jenny Lake at Grand Tetons are like a thousand a night. If you want the full experience with horseback riding and, um, you know, a smaller bed and breakfast type of feel, then I would totally recommend that. Um, but if you're going with a family of four or five and you want to have the experience and not be too close away from the park and not have to spend a lot, well then there are plenty of areas if you time it just right. Usually these places book a year in advance, but if you time it just right, uh, you can get right outside of the park for a fraction of the price of spending a thousand a night. And you can see, uh, um, have a lot of your hours from the day, have a plan, of course, and say, okay, I'm going to spend two days at Yellowstone. These are the, t these are the things that I want to be able to see. And I would recommend going early. I would also recommend packing a sandwich and snacks especially if you're in a big, 
big group because once you leave your Airbnb and you're outside of the park, then that takes you time to get back into the park. And once you're there, you want to see all that you can. You can eat a sandwich when you're parked, eat some snacks while you're parked, and then head on to your next venture, your next hiking trail. Because the way that Yellowstone is, is like a big circle and um, there's an app um that my husband used that was like having your own park guide inside of your vehicle for twenty dollars and they do other places too like um hawaii and different places but you uh, put the app on you do carplay or you plug it into the bluetooth of your car and it it's like got satellite where it knows exactly what part of the park you're in and it starts talking it tells you the history of that area that you're in and so forth so i do recommend getting um that app i don't know what it's called i'll have to link it down below it is twenty dollars i do know that but i also got some little gifts for my friends as well and to bring back home but I, like i said i got practical things that i know i'm gonna use like i'm always using um a bottle <laughs> and um i mostly use my bottles for water because here in Florida, the water gets warm really fast. So I always need like a nice bottle that will keep my water nice and cold. And I also like the wooden art and this little bear. I love the stand that it came on and it was really reasonably priced and it's so big. And I just love their artwork. And of course the t-shirts, I didn't get too many of them because some of them, like when you go to Grand Tetons, unbelievable i think a shirt was 60 dollars, and i definitely wasn't going to do that so i really enjoyed it i recommend that trip it can be done really cheaply with a family if you plan it ahead of time like i said a year in advance um you're gonna have to get lodging that is outside of the park but i hope that you enjoy the footage that is about to follow and if you visited Yellowstone or Grand Tetons and you have recommendations, please um, don't hesitate to comment down below because I would really like to see it. Also, let me know the last videos that i done were on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. This will be the first video that I have up on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. So let me know if you like the clarity. I already like it because I can see the differences in how my skin <laughs> looks in there. <laughs> And I don't have like a lot of makeup on or, or anything. So I hated how the 13 Pro Max, when I would do a video like this, had me all grainy in the picture. So I really like how this looks. So, but yeah, feel free to comment down below. You won't hurt my feelings. Um, my channel is a hobby and I do it as um, a way of recommending honestly things. Um, none of these companies pay me to do any of this. And so even if they did, um, if I recommended it, it'd be because, you know, I stand behind it. But I really recommend Yellowstone and um, Grand Tetons. I wish it wasn't such a long distance. And I think you can do it cheaply if you fly into Salt Lake City Airport. But then you have quite the drive. I think the closer you get to the park, the higher the flight is going to be as far as you landing closer to the park uh jackson hole is one of the reasons i didn't have time to do jackson hole and it was just i didn't have enough time for it i did pass through it because i was staying right outside of jackson hole um because we stayed in four or five different areas so that i could keep traveling down the park because i had a a planned out map how i was going to you know enjoy the different parts of the park so i did do the complete circle of yellowstone but I just didn't get enough time as much as I wanted for Grand Teton. So that's my only regret. So enjoy the video. And um, I'll have another video for you real soon. Enjoy. So this is one of the first Airbnbs that we stayed at. Um, and then some of our trip going into Yellowstone. You'll also see... Um, a lot of pictures of what the mountains and the ranges look like um, and the hills and the plains on the way over to the park. And because I always stayed a little bit outside of the park, 
Uh, you see that, and this is one of the animals that is there. It bugles really loud. Um, it makes a loud noise like it's in pain. So I got to see that every morning. And then you have a little bit of a route when you go into the park, depending on which entrance there are many you chose to, to uh, stay at. It's a home to Park's headquarters, mainly for their impressive appearance, just not their bit, true geological um, definition. Really the different the portions in a land of giants. I try to get both sides if I could. Sometimes that was difficult. It's pretty fast when you're going down the road. Um, you can't just slow down right away. You have to make sure that you have enough time to slow down so that the car behind you doesn't um, hit you. Here I saw someone actually climbing one of the um, mountains here and I didn't know that was legal in that area but that's the only person I ever saw do that and then you hear see what it looks like from um, the car when you're driving through and some of these images okay. the mountains look okay, the same this drop. even if you're on a different Side, but I also wanted you to see it's like the how precarious it was from the side of the road. If you can see how the roads bend, that's what I'm talking about when I say you can't just slam on your brakes and stop. Some areas it's just too hard to stop even though there's an overlook. It, you have to be very careful when you're going around these areas. Make sure that you're mindful of who's behind you, who's in front of you, who's turning in front of you because you see as, as these roads curve, they're not the safest of roads. Some of these overlooks are really big and they have a huge parking lot. So that's a little bit different because you'll see as it becomes dusk, a lot of the photographers are out there with their equipment, heavy duty equipment, trying to uh, get a picture of um, some of the animals. So here's something that you will always see while you're there is bison. I got, you know, a lot of them got close enough to, I think this right here is close enough, but they didn't bother us. I mean, we weren't over there, you know, jumping around trying to get its attention either. So always be mindful of the animals. Follow the park rangers rules. Don't get too close. Um, there's signs all over the park as to what's considered dangerous. Don't try to get inside of a Mountains. Um, geyser <laughs> or put your finger anywhere near there as you can see you see the steam it will burn uh, just follow the signs it's really um, no brainers but I guess some people get silly when they come to these places and they think they're going to you know I guess not get hurt or have any harm come to them by doing a lot of the silliness um, so there are signs they're warning you. This right here is hot as well. You have a lot of mud holes here and a lot of geysers. So you have to be very careful. And like I said, there are signs everywhere telling you what you're about to enter and you, you know bubbling? how to proceed with caution. So if you fall into it or you're playing around too close to it, that kind of falls on you because there's enough signs here telling you how dangerous um, and how how dangerous these things are and not to get too close to them. So in this particular walk that we did at this particular area, there was a lot of mud holes and a lot of um, the little geysers. So it's, it's about a two mile walk, I think, all the way around. So that's what we were doing here. And I was just trying to get pictures of everything so that you can see the differences and see how hot it boils um, it smells like old rotten egg when you walk by these things and so you will smell that I think appropriate clothing when you're doing these types of hikes is like what you would wear during a hike um, uh, it was still kind of warm when we went in the fall um, or right before fall started but it was still pretty warm I don't know the weather might have cooled down by now so I think if you wear your hiking gear and you have plenty and plenty of water because 
I wore my C-bands around my wrist because I can get kind of motion sickness to do a lot of these hikes. And I also brought a lot of water in my Yetis because um, when you stay well hydrated, it helps you with the elevation. And let me tell you, out here, you really feel the elevation get to you. So highly, highly, highly recommend that you make sure you and whoever's traveling with you, whether it's your children or your family, that they are well hydrated because that is what's going to help you with all of these different changes in elevation as you go around the circle at the Yellowstone and Grand Tetons. It is very, very um, <laughs> elevated and it changes. It doesn't stay the same. So you need lots and lots of water. And then the bathrooms, eh. I wouldn't say that the bathrooms are the cleanest. Uh, to me, they remind me of a porta potty. They're dirty. Um, very dirty. <laughs> Here you go, and you see another elk. Um, like I said, they, they bugle loud, the males do. Around this time, I think it was mating season when I went, and they were super loud. And it sounds like they're in pain when they make that noise. So I like this because they reminded me of like a, what a canyon would look like. I've never been to the Grand Canyon, but I really liked how, you know, the, these um, different mountains show like the inner parts of them. Like they've had volcanoes go through them and then they've had the mud holes. So you see how it's really affected them. Another little pretty and some waterfalls all over um, I didn't really stop for a lot of waterfalls but if I saw them as I was stopping I wanted to get them on camera I like how the water sounds when it's coming down it's really soothing and these are the different things that we visited while we were there I try to take pictures of a lot of them because they had a lot of information on the history of what we were seeing and then, like I said, you stay on the road when you're going around the loop there in Yellowstone. So I wanted to get a lot of the different things that were happening um, around the loop. Right. And you can see so here over here. this is a here. one here. Okay. I wanted to give you a panoramic view here. It's just so pretty. Even <laughs> even the trees. A lot of these trees erode. As you can see, they erode and they have like um, little white bottoms. They're called bobby socks on them because of the different um, being in, in the different um, elements of um, these hot water mud holes and geysers. They really. But even then, even though they're affected by those things, um, I still thought there there was a beauty about them. It's just not something I don't have that you see everywhere. Three more miles. And I really felt like there wasn't a bad picture um, when you took the different pictures of Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons. No matter where you were, even if the trees were looked dead like this, it's still very amazing how nature um, can get to this point and then it picks itself back up again and it is firmly on the ground and I just I just love that so I had to get pictures of these trees because they have adapted to their environment and they are firmly there on the ground and I just had to get a lot of these breathtaking views because like I said there is not a bad picture when you are going through the different um, loops here to see the different parts of Yellowstone. Like I said, I did get to do the whole loop, but I didn't so right stop at here, every little overlook. Um, like I said, I had up. my guide on the little app. It was um, the and the, the guide basically told me chamber. what was worth stopping for. He would tell me um, how long it would take me if I did do that to do the, um, of the details so different, um, they're all drives. Some of them are hikes, but he would tell you like how long it will take. And then some more history on the canyons there in Yellowstone. And I didn't have a magnifier on my phone. 
I did order it, but I just couldn't get it to stay on. But if you really look in, I try to zoom in as much as I could. You'll see the little animals at the bottom of the different canyons here. Um, here I saw some moose and some of the elk, I think, down here. But I didn't see, um, which I was trying to see on these cliffs, is the sheep that they have there. They have the special um, footing for this type of environment so that they don't fall. And I wanted to see that. I forgot what the sheep here are called. Um, but anyway, I never saw them. Um, my husband saw a red fox. I didn't see. This is a picture of the north rim showing you what we had traveled. And... Um, I didn't get to see the red fox because they just moved past him really the fast. Of the water. Um, so a lot of people, so I try to <laughs> zoom in as you can see to show you the animals. I don't know if you can see them or not. I did have to use the binoculars and I was able to see them then. But anyway, I tried to zoom in as much as the camera would allow me to so that just to let you know, keep your eyes open when you go to these different overlooks and see what you can see all the way at the bottom. But um, you will see animals um, at Grand Teton. Uh, if you go all the way to the top of the Jenny Lake um, hikes there, you can see uh, some moose drinking water. Some people saw bears. I never saw the bears, um, but I did get into the little ferry on the way back when I did the Jenny Lake hike there at Grand Teton, and people were telling me what they had seen. But as far as what I saw was a lot of elk. Um, I got to see little chipmunks that basically are like our squirrels in different places. And um, because I just saw chipmunks, I never really saw squirrel squirrels. I just saw chipmunks everywhere on that side. And um, what did I say? I saw elk, the chipmunk, and I saw bison bison elk and chipmunks but like i said my husband saw a moose and he saw a red fox and other people have seen moose and bears i wish i would have gotten that for you but i So hopefully you enjoy the sounds of the water. Like I said, that's one of my favorite sounds.
And here are some views for you of the Grand Prismatic. Know that there is an uh, entry in the bottom um, here at ground level. And then there's another entry that you have to hike up to. It's pretty steep. So it takes your breath away. But that is the best way to get the picture of the Grand Prismatic is, is doing that hike. So this is the ground level, like I said. And then there's the one that's all the way at the top. Totally worth it to get the best picture. This is blue mud steam vent. Steam vent. There are a lot of mud holes here as where as as well as the little geysers. So a lot to see here. Puff and stuff geyser. You can hear how noisy it is. If you look closely. What was that stone call? So this is Orange Spring Mound, and you can hear you can see that because that's what you hear. 
a spring coming out of that mound, see? So these trees that have the white on the trunk, this is because it's been in this area trapped as this orange mound. See the steam coming off of it ever so slightly. You can see it on this end, the steam coming off. There we go, steam. This is Orange Mound. And these are some scenes of what they call mountain lion. So back to the tree, you have to see they're it, called body socks. Um, they've or lion mountain. Um, you have to see it first thing in the morning to see how the steam comes off of it. Um, and this is the entrance to, one of the entrances to Yellowstone. And so you see some of these animals. Some of these animals run faster than a cheetah. Um, I got a, a pronghorn is what they were called. But every time I came in the evening, uh, they were so far. I can get a good picture of them. But yeah, look that up. The pronghorns. Uh, they're part of the giraffe family. As well as more elk. And then the evening when you're coming back around the loop, you'll see everybody else is like either behind you or in front of you. Everybody leaves around the same time. A lot of people try to get these good pictures of the animals at dusk. And like I said, there's bison everywhere. So mm -hmm. you will definitely see bison. And here are some more views for you. I just like how the different you can hear the water heat roaring. and gas elements uh, where they've eroded like the rock of the mountain. It still looks so beautiful. That's like the best sound to sleep puts you to sleep. smoke coming out of it. Definitely a highlight sitting out there and waiting for Old Faithful to erupt. Um, was exciting. I got to see that twice. And as you can see here, here's the crowd. So when you see all the benches filled up this way, you know for a fact that it's about to erupt. If there's hardly anyone sitting there, then it's not close enough to get erupting. But if you look and all of those benches that are right in front of Old Faithful start to fill up, then it's about to erupt.
and you definitely cannot miss seeing the grand prismatic um definitely you have to take the time out to see this i mean the pictures don't do it justice This right here. You see it? You just can't see it very well. I'm sorry. Okay. I want you to see. Look at them. And I think some of these guys are out in the road and they're causing a humongous traffic jam. Stand still traffic. Sorry to be in your way, guys, but do you hear their noises? Is there a baby anywhere? No, he's just being lazy. He's laying down. Okay. Also, know that when you're on this loop, sometimes traffic will stop. You'll be delayed for up to 30 minutes, if not more, because these animals decide to cross and we have to yield to them. So don't be surprised if on your route you have to stop and you get into traffic jams because of the animals. So this guy right here is Mount Morin. I hope I'm saying it right. M-O-R-A-N. And then there's a highway there. But look. It's like they literally touch the clouds.
little fall here. I like how it turns all different colors all in one. So here you hike on Jenny Lake's um, area to get to Hidden Creek Falls. And if you go past that, I forgot what that overlook is called. But you're able to see the top. Um, I forgot what it's called after Hidden Creek. But anyway, I know that you'll be able to research it there. This is by a museum, but I wanted you to get an idea what the bathrooms over there in Yellowstone look like. So we were able to see a little museum. I forgot what the name of it was called, but um, on our way out back to the airport, we went in and this particular little museum there in the community has um, a lot of artwork uh, of people depicting the Grand Teton. So I hope that you enjoyed this visit that we had at Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons. If you've been there, please let me know in the comments below and give a like to this video. And I really hope that this video helps you on your upcoming trip. Thank you. Enjoy.